finance and the leadership of the Reserve Bank. Your Excellency, Mr. President, the Minister of Finance, Governor of the Reserve Bank, Deputy Minister of Finance, ladies and gentlemen of the media, good morning and welcome to the Union Buildings. We take this opportunity this morning to give His Excellency the President of the Republic of South Africa, President Jacob Zuma, the opportunity to make a statement of national importance. Your Excellency, the President. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Director General. The Minister of Finance, the Governor, and Deputy, Deputy Governor of the South African Reserve Bank, Deputy Minister of Finance, ladies and gentlemen of the media. In terms of the Constitution, the primary objective of the South African Reserve Bank is to protect the value of the currency in the interest of balanced and sustainable economic growth in the Republic. The Reserve Bank must perform its functions independently and without fear, favor, or prejudice. During the past five years, the bank performed its functions in the context of a tough global financial crisis and challenging domestic economic factors. The institution registered excellent performance during this difficult period under the capable leadership of the board, the governor, Ms. Jill Marcus, and the deputy governors. As you are aware, Ms. Marcus will leave the bank at the end of her term on the 8th of November, 2014. I would like to thank Ms. Marcus for her sound leadership, commitment, and dedication, which has enabled the bank to perform as well as it has done under the difficult economic climate. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure today to announce my decision to appoint Mr. Lesicha Kanyahu as governor of the South African Reserve Bank with effect from the 9th of November 2014. I appointed Mr. Kanyahu as deputy governor on the Reserve Bank in 2011 which should enable a smooth transition to his new position as he is already part of the team. The governor-designate has wide-ranging ex experience in financial markets. He is highly regarded for his extensive knowledge and expertise of the South African global financial systems. Incidentally, the governor designate worked at the Reserve Bank as assistant manager for investment dealing in 1994, which gave him an insight into what happens at the lower levels of the institution. The governor designate also brings an experience 
of having served in government at a top management level as a former director general of the National Treasury from, 20, from 2004. He had joined the Treasury in, in 1996. During his tenure as Director General, he successfully steered several public finance and financial market reforms. As DG of the Treasury, he led South Africa's technical team to various meetings of G20 ministers of finance and governors and the G20 presidential summits. The governor designate holds, among other qualifications, a master of science degree in development economics from the University of London's School of Oriental and African Studies and a Bachelor of Commerce degree in accounting and economics from, university, from the University of South Africa. Among various positions earlier in his career, Mr. Kanyaku served as economics coordinator and accountant for the African National Congress and as an accountant for COSATU. I wish Mr. Kanyaku all the best in this new responsibility. I have no doubt that he will acquit himself as proficiently in this new role as he has previously done in other strategic positions. We have now begun the process of filling the vacancy of deputy governor that will be created and an announcement will be made in due course. I thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency the President. I shall now give the opportunity to the Governor designate Mr. Jahanyaho to make an acceptance uh, input. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DG. <coughs> Uh, President of the Republic of South Africa, Mr. Jacob Zuma, the Minister of Finance, uh, Mr. Ntanza Nene, uh, the Governor of the Reserve Bank, Ms. Jill Marcus, Deputy Minister of uh, Finance, I haven't seen you when I got in here, uh, the DG of the Treasury, board members of the South African Reserve Bank here present, and all protocols observed. Mr. President, thank you very much for the confidence that you have had in me in once again asking me to come and serve our people in one of the most difficult tasks. The position of a governor of the Reserve Bank is at the apex of the public service. I am humbled and I am truly honored that a uh, the leadership of the country had found that I would be suitable to execute this mammoth task. I shall not disappoint. Been there, seen it before, looks like whenever there is a difficult task that this government has to assign in finance and in economics, I get called upon. I have got no doubt, Mr. President, that uh, eyes would also be on me, and I'm saying to you that I will not disappoint. To Governor Marcus and uh, my colleagues at the Reserve Bank and the staff of the bank that I had had the pleasure of working with uh, for the past three years, it is a continuity. It is a continuum that we had seen since Ms. Marcus arrived at the bank in 2009, and I do not have to reinvent anything. 
I just have to carry from where uh, she had left. Like an African matriarch, she had left the Reserve Bank steadfastly. She has guided us through the dangerous forest that is the global economy. She knows where the drinking holes are. We had figured them, and elephants don't forget, we will find those drinking holes because she has guided us through that forest. At the same time, we understand that as I take this role, central banks are, changed, are, are faced with a range of challenges. The world of central banking is not what it used to be. The world over central banks are being faced with a challenge of having to balance the issue of growth and the issue of tackling uh, inflation. Lessons from the global financial crisis also tell us that the singular task of the central bank of exclusively focusing on price stability is not enough to make sure that economic crises do not materialize. Hence, the world over, central banks have had this added mandate of financial stability. The Central Bank of South Africa, the South African Reserve Bank, had also been tasked in a letter from the Minister of Finance that said that we now have an explicit mandate with respect to financial, to financial stability. These twin mandates are what we will continue to espouse and we will be able to pursue these mandates as our constitution tasks us uh, to do. And maybe let me reiterate what the president had said, because as the president was saying this, he was quoting from section 224 of the constitution of the Republic of South Africa. Just in case you forgot what that section of our constitution says, it says the primary object of the South African Reserve Bank is the protection of the value of the currency in the interests of balanced and sustainable growth in the republic. But it also goes further. It says, but there shall be regular consultation between the South African Reserve Bank and the cabinet member responsible for national financial matters. He is here. I know where his office is. I know where he stays. I have his telephone number. I will make sure that those regular consultations actually do, uh, do take place. Mr. President, I think as you assigned me this task, I also had a sense that you are bestowing on me trust. And I have got no doubt that the trust that you are bestowing in me is what our people are also bestowing in me. The people of our country have always bestowed this trust in me in the various positions that I have been privileged enough uh, to serve in. I do not this take this trust for granted. And in espousing this trust, I have got no doubt that in executing the mandate of the Reserve Bank, I will leave to the ideals that the Constitution holds the Reserve Bank to, of pursuing our mandate without fear, favor, or prejudice. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Designate. I now wish to call upon the Governor of the Reserve Bank, Ms. Jill Marcos. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And above all, come. <laughs> That's it. Now you stand here. Mr. President, I'd like to really, on behalf of the bank, to thank you for the confidence that you've had in all of us. Um, for the five years, it's been my privilege to lead this very august institution and for choosing a successor from within the bank. 
And I think that's a hallmark of the depth and the strength of the organization that we have been part of and been privileged to be part of. And it is a reflection of the depth of the knowledge, of the choice that we have, of the skill, but above all of the commitment and the trust that the people of South Africa and the leadership of South Africa have in the bank and in the people who lead it. And therefore, it is a particular privilege. Come, 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 don't go sit there. <laughs> this is your place now, my dear. And the question around it is really to say, I wish you well. I have absolutely no doubt that you will reflect the strength of the organization, the commitment to the values and the system of trust that we have built up, the engagement that we have with the public, the engagement we have with the staff, and above all, the ability to take the decisions in the interest of the country, as you said, without fear or prejudice or favor. And it really is on my part to say to you, <coughs> you're gonna have an amazing experience. Deputy is never the same, the buck stops here. So it is, but it's a wonderful experience to have and you have a wonderful team to work with. And I wish you every success. I have no doubt you will live up to the trust and explain so, all the best. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you Carl. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>
that, that macroeconomic coordination now. <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing around the right. You will get my photo afterwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to now release His Excellency the President. Uh, hereafter, there will be a doorstop for the governor, the governor designate, and the minister. But we take leave of the president. In case you've got uh, further matters uh, to raise, uh, I'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Skakane to come to the fore. He is the media person at National Treasury. I am now um, directing generally that he comes <laughs> here, that he must come here and uh, conduct a, a media doorstop in case you want to ask something of, of uh, the governor designate the governor and the minister. What's about? Yeah, you've been. Uh... Hi, uh, good morning. Um, the governor designate has agreed to take some questions, so if you have any. Right, let's take them in a group of three or four, right, uh, Renee? Thank you very much. Um, it's Renee Volgra from um, Bloomberg News. Um, uh, shall I say, Governor Designate Hanyahu, congratulations on your appointment. Um, sir, I would like to know, what do you see as your main challenge or priority when you take office on the 9th? Any other question? Ah, sorry. Governor De Designate, my name is Collins, I'm talking with Voice of Nigeria. Um, I'd like to know what extra you'll be doing to encourage first intra-Africa trade as well as uh, to arrest the issue of the decline of the, uh, of the rent. In the front. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Mr. Kanyaho. I'm Tsepwekane from the SABC. In your statement, you said that uh, there is uh, this issue of uh, the imperative of uh, balancing economic growth and curbing inflation. And there's also some pressures that comes from uh, unions, especially the ANC Alliance, consult over our monetary policy. How do you intend maybe navigating uh, these pressures to make sure that you deliver? for all in your mandate. Thanks. Um, challenges um, will remain what they have been. Um, I do not foresee new challenges at this stage. Uh, there might be others that uh, would crop up as it always happens in, uh, uh, in economics. Uh, today is not about, uh, about policy. Um, the chair of the MPC is here if you want to talk policy, and I'm sure she will say no. Um, uh, just to say that uh, organizationally, 
uh, two things that I'd always focused on. Um, I believe in uh, building institutions that attract the best brains uh, uh, to them. Um, and I do think that I do have uh, uh, that record, and I would like that infused even with more vigor in the, uh, in the Reserve Bank. And secondly, that um, with the new mandate of uh, financial stability, uh, the South African Reserve Bank must be geared up to be able to fulfill uh, that mandate. The issue of financial, of financial stability is a bit more complex than uh, monetary policy. Monetary policy is very clear. You have got one target, you pursue it, and we can see whether you are achieving it or not. Whereas financial stability is defined as that state when there is no financial instability. Now that becomes very clear and complex for you, uh, for you, uh, for you to manage. The issue of intra-Africa uh, uh, trade, that is uh, something that uh, central banks are not particularly good at. Ministries of Trade and Industry are the competent authorities to do that. But in a way we did in a no small uh, a manner. As central banks in SADC, um, we're introducing a uh, cross-border uh, cross payment system which we call uh, CIRES, and we believe that that will be very facilitative uh, uh, of trade. But in most instances, the reason uh, our barriers in, uh, uh, in trade is not so much about the payment uh, systems, but the payment systems do underpin um, the, facilitation, uh, the facilitation of trade. Uh, on the mandate, how we are going to navigate it, I have said to you, I have learned from the best matriarch. She knows where the watering holes are. And with that trend of uh, continuous engagement, continuous outreach uh, with a, a cross-section of, of, of our society. That is how you reach out uh, uh, to people. But do understand, the primary object of the South African Reserve Bank is the protection of the value of the currency in the interest of balanced and sustainable growth. Growth can't be balanced if there are internal and external imbalances. You've got to watch those. Growth can't be balanced if you have a state of financial instability. You're going to have to look at those without losing sight of what the Constitution had actually tasked the South African Reserve Bank to do. All right. Uh, can we take uh, one more round of questions? If, is there any? Oh. Uh, thanks again. Uh, Minister Nene, uh, what is your message of uh, encouragement or of advice or uh, well wishes to the uh, governor designate? And maybe taking this opportunity that the, there are processes for the public sector to negotiate their salary increases, their foot rate demanded 15%. Uh, what's your view with regard to? those demands uh, ahead of the wage negotiations then? Right, the gentleman at the back. Okay, Madam Governor, I, I congratulate you. But while you were in office, um, it might be necessary to re-examine the policy of, in, of allowing foreign banks, for instance, to come in here, particularly banks within Africa that want to open branches. What some have said in some economic discourse circle is that they are finding it difficult for up to three, four years to open up here because of certain policy uh, management. Uh, what, how do you hope to ease this so that, that would, it would call for um, a fluid system of banking between South Africa and uh, other countries and between banks in South Africa as private or government owned and banks from other African countries. Any other? Ah, uh, the um, hi, Arabile Komete, ENCA. Um, Finance Minister, this is really to you as well. I, I believe that you may have been part of the whole uh, nomination process in some way or other. And we wanted to find out why it was that regarding um, the, the new appointment, um, why, why, why was so much time sort of taken? 
um, having known perhaps that Jill, Jill Marcus had said earlier that she wouldn't be um, taking helm of the Reserve Bank again for another five-year term. Any other questions? Uh, Bennett? I think that one was Jen. No, uh, can you use the mic? You hear me better with the mic? Yes. No, mine is not a cracking question. I, I want to find out from the outgoing governor, what will be doing come November 8th? Right. Oh, uh, Angelo, that's the last one. Angelo Coppola from uh, China Central Television. Governor, outgoing governor, one word of advice for the new designate governor. What would it be, or one statement? All right. Going, gone. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm sure... Uh, Seppo, you just wanted me to speak. So that's all. <laughs> My message of encouragement to, uh, to the governor-designate is that um, he comes from a team that has done well. He has been part of this team. He also now takes the reins. As he said, he knows my address. I also know his address. Not sure about all his uh, telephone numbers, but um, he walks into a team that is dedicated to taking the country forward, and I trust that the coordination of monetary and fiscal policy is going to be taken to the next level, because it was happening, and we trust that um, during these times, uh, these challenging times, we actually need to even strengthen that. So I assure him of our support, I assure him also that the team that he now joins at the ranks of taking responsibility, as the uh, governor said, when the buck stops with you, I have experience in uh, changing uh, uh, positions to a point where the buck stops with you. When somebody has taken your job like the de de deputy minister has done, <laughs> and I then immediately take uh, somebody else's job, but indeed the buck stops with you on monetary policy. The wage demands uh, 15%. Uh, that's the opening wage demand, and uh, this uh, will go through the processes. We have a very well-developed industrial uh, um, um, uh, relations process in this country. We, we will all open at uh, particular points. We will communicate our opening uh, bid at the appropriate uh, time, venue, and forum. <coughs> um, the time it took, I, I'm not too sure. I, I think the only thing we missed was the Monetary Policy Committee meeting. Unfortunately, uh, the president had not uh, uh, completed the process, and I would uh, want to believe that it didn't take too long if we are here today to announce uh, the, the new governor. I think the president uh, took enough time um, taking into account all the processes that needed to be followed in order to make sure that when he does make the appointment, it is an appointment of the nature and the caliber that we have. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, thanks for the three questions. Let me start with the banking one. Um, I think that South Africa's policies on banking in South Africa is one in which we look at an inclusive approach, but a sound one. It follows in terms of what we expect, the Basel key principles, and therefore a bank needs to comply. Don't forget, what we're dealing with is other people's money. Many of the international banks are present in South Africa in various forms, and South Africa has a very strong, sound banking system. So I'm not aware that other banks who would like to come in find it difficult. Uh, they would find it difficult if they can't comply with the requirements of sound banking. And therefore, if there's any uh, organization, it certainly hasn't come to my attention, and Deputy Governor Kanyako is responsible for bank supervision, and regulation, and I don't think there's anything that's come to his attention because it would have been something that's discussed. So if there is, I would suggest that anyone that you're aware of who's having difficulty, they should contact the Registrar of Banks and advise us accordingly because uh, we don't follow a process of excluding anyone. We base our decisions on the question of meeting the soundness and the criteria that we would want in our system. So anyone is welcome to contact us if they feel that they have not had a fair shake but I would be surprised. We're certainly not aware of it. 
On the question of advice to the incoming governor, well, stamina, stamina. Uh, I can't give him any advice. We exchange ideas and information and interact all the time. And for any of you who are aware of the, uh, perhaps some of the unsound habits of the governors, all of us, uh, and others in the bank, is we usually start communicating at about three o'clock in the morning, depend who is sleeping or not sleeping, who's gone to run. So while he's running and doing his gym and somebody else is doing gym, there's a question of, did you see this yesterday and so on. And I think the advice to him is you've got to have stamina. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And that's the only thing I would add. We have constant inter interaction. And obviously, if there's any issue that he feels he would like to talk to me about, I'm available now or in the future. What will I be doing on the 8th of the 11th? That's actually my last day. The Friday is the 7th, and I hope that I would be able to spend time at the bank bidding farewell to colleagues who I've had the privilege to work with for five years, and I will decide thereafter. As you are aware, there is, we've instituted a process of a cooling off period of six months, and in that period I am going to find uh, a little bit of time for myself is what I intend to do. So thank you all very much, and thank you for all the interest you've shown in the bank, in the work we do, and to keep the public informed and to ensure that we meet our obligations. And again, I wish to thank the President and the Minister for the appointments being made, as well as to wish the incoming Governor, uh, we've got lots of time over the next month to, to exchange views and look at what the issues are and hand over properly. And I'm sure he's going to make a, a, a resounding success of his role. So thank you all very much. Uh, thank you very much. That's it.